oblique triangles, two sides and the angle opposite a known side. If we look at the example we have on the board, we see that we have an acute triangle with angles A, B, and C, and we know one of the angles. We know the angle is 63 degrees. We also know two of the sides. We know A is 12 and B is 10. When you're deciding whether to use the law of sines or the law of cosines, the first thing you need to look for is to see if you have an angle and the side opposite it. Do you know both of those facts? And yes, I do. I know A and, and side A, angle A and side A. I know both of those. So I'll be able to use the law of sines in this problem. The first thing we're going to want to solve for in this particular problem is angle B. I can see I've got a ratio to set up here and I can set the same ratio up with B and side B. So when I start this problem out, I'm going to be searching for angle B, and I'm going to do so using the law of sines. So to start the problem, I'm going to use the ratio that I know and say 12 over sine 63. That's the ratio between this side and the angle opposite. So 12 over sine 63 is equal to, and I'm looking at this ratio now, 10 over the sine of B. And I want to be able to solve this problem. So when I'm going to look at the problem, I know that I have to do some cross multiplying. If I multiply this direction first, I'll get 12 sine b is equal to 10 times sine 63 when I do the other multiplication. So I cross 12 times sine b and 10 and sine 63 also get multiplied together. I want b to be by itself on one side of the equation, so I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 12. And I'll have the sine of b is equal to 10 times sine 63 over 12. The 12's are canceling out. Now I'll be able to find sine b using my calculator. So when I cross to the calculator, I'm going to make sure it's cleared. I'll take 10 times the sine of 63, so 63 sine, divided by 12. And I get the answer point 7425. So I know that the sine of B is equal to 0.7425. Now I don't want to know the sine of B, remember. I actually want to know what angle B is. And I do that by accessing my second function key. Since my decimal is already in there and I want to find the angle that gave me that sine, I'm going to hit second sine and I get 47.9453 degrees. Angle B is 47.9453 degrees. Now we don't usually leave our answers in terms of decimals when we're working with degrees. We want to change it to degrees, minutes, and seconds. So we're going to come to the calculator and find the degree, minute, second button. It's a second function and I'll hit second. We see that this is equal to 47 degrees, 56 minutes, and 43 seconds. And we're going to round that up to 47 degrees and 57 minutes. So this is about equal to 47 degrees and 57 minutes. Now that found the first missing part of our triangle. We just found angle B. What we want to do is also find angle C and side C. I can find angle C easily if I remember that there have to be 180 degrees in a triangle. So I know for finding that angle, that angle A plus B plus C should equal 180 degrees. Well, I know angle A, it's 63 degrees. And I know angle B now, I found out it's 47 degrees and 57 minutes. And I'm trying to find angle C, but I know that those three angles should total 180 degrees. If I add these two angles together, I have 110 degrees and 57 minutes plus C is equal to 180. And if I subtract 110 degrees and 57 minutes from both sides of my equation, I'll get C is equal to 69 degrees and 3 minutes. Now you're going to want to be careful with this 3 minutes when you put it into your calculator for the next part of the problem. Finally, the only thing that's missing now is side C. We need to be able to find side C. Since we know angle C, we're going to be able to find the ratio between those two things and we're going to use the law of sines to find the remaining side. So the last part of our problem will be to find side C and we're going to do that with the law of sines. You're going to pick a ratio that you already know. For example, the ratio between angle A and side A and I'll say 12 over the sine of 63 is going to be equal to the ratio that I want to know. I want to find out C, so I'll write up C, 
over the sine of angle C. And angle C was 69 degrees and 3 minutes. So I'll have 69 degrees and 3 minutes. If I want to solve for C, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by the sine of 69 degrees and 3 minutes. So I'll multiply the sine of 69 degrees and 3 minutes on the left, and the sine of 69 degrees and 3 minutes on the right as well. Now on the right-hand side of the equation, these are going to cancel, so I'll be left with side C. On the right, left-hand side of the equation, I have the sine of 69 degrees and 3 minutes times 12 over the sine of 63. And I'm going to use my calculator to continue to solve this problem. The first thing I want to do is the sine of 69 degrees and 3 minutes. So when I clear my calculator out, I'm going to use this function of my calculator. 3 minutes is the same as 03. So I'm going to put in 69 degrees, and I'll put a decimal to separate the minutes. That means 69 degrees and 3 minutes. Now if I hit my decimal degree key, it will change it to the decimal 69.05. And now I can take the sine of that value. I'll multiply it times 12, and then divide it by the sine of 63. So I'll have 63 sine, and I'll have, hit the equal key, and I get 12.5776. is equal to C. So I have found the length of the missing side. To review, we started out with a triangle that had three parts known. I knew two sides and an angle. And I wanted to find the missing side and the missing two angles. I checked and found that I knew an angle and the side opposite, so I knew I was able to use the law of sines. I used the law of sines to find one of the missing angles to be 47 degrees and 57 minutes. In the second step, I found the second angle by finding that all three angles needed to add up to 180 degrees. Using that information, I was able to find the second missing angle to be 69 degrees and 3 minutes. And finally, in finding the third side, I knew that I could use the law of sines. I used the law of sines once again and found that side C was equal to 12.5776. When you use what you know about triangles in tandem with the law of sines and the law of cosines, you can solve for all of the missing parts. Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.